Right, we got all the goss going on here. Uh, Abby Clancy is in the house. Big intro, please, Vassos. You know our next guest from the telly, from the dance floor, from the catwalk, and increasingly from all of your favourite podcasts. Her latest podcast, Exhibit A with Abby Clancy, is available every Monday. So please welcome the Abby Fabby, Abby Clancy. Oh, I, I love that intro. <laughs> it's amazing. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm very well. All right, let's get let's cut to the chase the elephant in the room where did you watch the game last night i I didn't even know it was on (laughs) i knew peter actually performed his podcast before the game at the isle of white festival in the big top if you don't know abby clancy is married to peter cratch (laughs) used to play for england and abby didn't know there was a game last night and the funniest thing is well because i i couldn't go because my it was my son's school play and right. he was very excited. So I stayed home and we had an impromptu play date with a few of the mums. And bizarrely, one of them is also a England ex-England player's wife. Right. And, you know, we were oblivious to that whole I England love it. game thing. I <laughs> you know? love it. We so, were waiting for Love Island. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I was, um, I heard that Peter was on the Isle of Wight. I thought oh, he must be there for the Isle of Wight Festival. Um, but I didn't realise he was actually performing there, not yeah. just attending. So mm. that's cool, isn't it? Mm. It was. It, he said it was incredible. There was like 10,000 people in the crowd. And even though uh, apparently they drew, I, I learned yes um the spirits were still up and everyone was just like you know because the game was on i suppose yeah game was on he he was before the game half time and at the end brilliant so yeah brilliant so that's his podcast you now have your own podcast don't you yes all right so we chatted about this when we met a couple of weeks ago yeah and it is abby it's brilliant mate thank you honestly it's so good you're so good interviewing people really yeah you are you know it's so hard you, well, it doesn't sound it. I mean, I think it's hard, but I've been doing it forever. <laughs> you, you, you come along, you, you sort of drop in, you parachute into my world, how very dare you, <laughs> and then you interview Liz Hurley better than I've ever interviewed her by miles. Oh, I love Elizabeth Hurley. She is just an icon and so down to earth and yeah. lovely. Like, I think, you know, this podcast, Exhibit A, is a completely different beast to the Therapy Crouch because even, you know, my brother and my cousin produce Therapy Crouch. They give us yeah. topics to talk about. I've never read one of my episode plans. <laughs> we just sit on the couch and chat. But with Exhibit A, I have to do so much research. And it's, and it's obvious that you do it. But it's so interesting. Yeah. You know, I feel like I've learned so much about people and the world and life yeah. just from you know, researching these people. Yeah, and you're only a few in, so you've got mm. it all to come still, haven't you? Yeah. How's it going down? I love it. It's going down well. Yeah? It's going down really well. I, Everyone seems to be loving it, and, you know, that's the main thing. You said to me it's a bit like your version of um, Stephen Bartlett. Yeah. And I thought, I get that, and then I listened to it, and I thought, yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Um, because it's you being, you know, 100% you, uh, having done all the research, and then having a chat... Plus, plus, because you mm. love a chat. I love a chat. Yeah, but it's more than that going on, and that's what I say. Obviously, doing the search because you keep it going, and there is a journey. The, the Liz Hurley interview. I didn't know ninety percent of those things mm. about Liz Hurley. It's it's so funny. Like when you are looking into people, you're like, God, I didn't know they were born there. I didn't know that happened to them. Yeah. You know, and some tragic things happen to people, and they still end up at like the the top of their game and super successful and it's like it's it's inspiring and i think you know i'm i'm nearly 40 i've got four kids and i feel like you come to a point in your life where you're like i just want to do something else and yeah. all these people are what the people i've had on are people i want to know about and yeah. how did they do that how did they manage to bring this product out or how did they become a hollywood actor yeah and it's it's inspiring for I think for people who are at home thinking what can I do next. Yeah, your chat honestly, because I'm I'm obsessed with this one interview this week about between Rick Rubin and Robert Downey Jr. It's yeah. a fantastic chat, and it's it's I've never heard Robert Downey Jr. like he is on this particular conversation. And for me, you and Liz Hurley, you're the female equivalent of that <laughs> chat. Honestly, it's Thanks. that good, Abby. It's not Thanks. joking. It's that good. Um, super cool. I didn't know I didn't know that she always wanted to be an actress. Didn't mm. know that she didn't live in London she moved to London didn't know any of those things didn't know she lost her dad you yeah. know uh, uh, unfortunately when he was far too young to go and that his, her mum lives with her now all that stuff 
Um, She's so like me. I, what's that? <laughs> she's so like me. She I was is... like, you have literally got the same life as really? me. You know, she's so family. Yeah. She doesn't like to leave the house. Yeah. She loves her animals. But you know, when you're sitting in front of an icon like Elizabeth, you're kind of scared to kind of dig deep. You know, I wanted to push it a little bit more, but you think, you know, you no, gotta have kind I of. Th- I don't think it works. It works if you do that anyway, and because you know, you can only you you're when you're doing an interview. I think, not you, but one. When one is doing an interview, you're actually not the one with the spade. I think that's what the inter- that's a big uh, mistake that a lot of interviewers make. You're not. You can't dig deep. You can just ask them, do they want to dig deep? Yeah. And I think that's what you're good at. Thanks. That, that's 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 how it works. I think. Um, you know, you talked to Elizabeth Hurley about her acting. You talked to her about her family situation. But then she's a big fan of yours because she loves Strictly. So funny. Can you imagine? Yeah, but it's a great way to get in, isn't it? <laughs> I know, I know. And his son is just gorgeous, Damien. They were, you know, when she agreed to come on, I was like, I can't believe it, you know. When did you do Strictly? That was 2013. 11 years ago. Yeah. Ele- and you I won? Know. I won. I know. And Pete still gets hailed the better dancer at the Rovers. Which That's so unfair. I I, it's so unfair. Yeah, only by his fans, I would imagine. Um, <laughs> you, you had never danced before that, had you? No. You'd had bits and bobs and well, things. Well, I'd, I'd always loved singing and dancing as a kid, but right. I'd never gone to anything. I went to the Harlequin Road show, right. and it was like a little kind of dance troupe where you would do shows of a weekend or train, learn dancers once a week or whatever as a as a baby. But yeah. I've never done anything. So you're just playing at it. Just playing at it. And when you when you went to do it first of all, did it did do you click with it or was it a, a gradual process? Did you think, oh, this is for me? I've got something here because you won. Like I say, you won. I, I think. I loved the training side of it, the performance side. I really struggled with. I am, I'm so. Um, you like the discipline? N- I, I, no, I just I love music. I right. love listening to music. I love learning a skill. Like for me, going to the gym or go, going on the treadmill would is like hell. But doing a boxing class where you're actually learning something, and with Strictly, I just love doing something new and having that incredible routine at the end. But I, I hated the performance. Did just you? my nerves. I just could not. Tell us about that. It was just made me feel ill, like, and it was even though I won, I was so disappointed because my nerves held me back, and I was like, I could have done this, right? Full J Lo style, you know. Well, yeah, but you but you couldn't, you couldn't, because you didn't, and if mm. you didn't, then you can't. Do you know what I mean by I know, that? I know. Um, but of course, the more you, if you'd have carried on doing it, you'd become more relaxed, and you because you, did you feel this sort of superpower of of flow waiting in the background, going get out, get out your own way, kind of thing. Yeah. That kind of thing. Yeah, I did. I did, but I, I'm my own. Worst enemy when it comes to like my nerves holding my back, holding me back. Like Peter, like if if he's in front of a crowd, he's like, yeah, and he can perform where I just die. You, do what, you honestly? Oh, well, you it's do... such a hindrance. Oh, That's why I like doing our podcast because I'm like sitting on the couch in our house yeah, and I can yeah, chat. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's such a weird thing, you. and I hope I don't pass it down to my kids. No, I believe because some people say thing. they're reluctant performers, but they're just lying. Mm. <laughs> they're just deni- they're yeah. in denial of their own ego. Their ego is denying their own ego. Yeah. But you're not like that because because it's so cool. Uh, what I love the Peter podcast because yeah. so so you, sorry I know you do for people you know, you know Abby does a podcast with Peter anyway, but you've also had him on as a guest of yours. Yeah, and that was hard. Yeah. Not butting in. <laughs> you know, Peter's never finished a sentence in his life in our relationship. Um, so interviewing him and being quiet and letting him talk was very difficult. Isn't it interesting that when you interview somebody who you love dearly, like you love Peter, it, it's it's the first time you've ever had a conversation like that in your life. Yeah. And did you did you become very did you become very emotional in that interview? I, I did. I, I think you know we touched on. A few things that I learned about him from his documentary. He had a, a documentary out earlier in brilliant. the year. Yeah. And some of the things on that I, I didn't know about Pete. For example? You know, all the abuse he got, all the articles calling him a freak and he should be in the circus and the, the abuse from the fans and the, the media. And how I just find it remarkable how he managed to overcome that and still you know, represent the country and play for some of the biggest clubs in the world. Yeah. Because most people would, it would completely destroy them. Yeah. And I think that shows a lot about his character. And also to come out of that the other side, being such a kind man and not bitter. 
Yeah. Like it, it, it was just making me sad. Even you were as well. Yeah, it's um, oh. it was horrible that. So to interview him was was good, and it, but I didn't want to get him too sad. <laughs> uh, and did you find it cathartic? I did not struggle with sorry. It is... Yeah, it's um, he's he's a very special guy, and um, I lo- I loved interviewing him. He was fab. All right. <laughs> um, oh. Is it what's wrong with me today? Have you got a tissue. Can we get yeah. a tissue, please? We should, we should have a box of tissues. It's often like therapy t- in here. You know what it's I like. I don't know what, to, what the hell. The therapy crouch. Therapy crouch. It's because you care. I, mm. I sense the fact... It just, it's like, you know, if someone's mean to one of your kids, like, yeah. whatever you want to kill them. And, you know, when I heard all that stuff about Peter, I was so shocked. Well, and also, when he was more of a child, in a way, you know... Yeah. And that's little Pete, isn't it? Yeah. Getting all that abuse. Nobody... I, I'm going now. I know. <laughs> but it's, Nobody deserves some, all that. For so, some reason... It's allowed because of your height. You can't get away with saying nasty things to people for other issues. But yeah. height is kind of... And it shouldn't be. No. It absolutely, 100% shouldn't be. Mm. Who else have you interviewed? I've heard all the podcasts, but for people who don't know, who else have you interviewed? Mo Gaudat, who was phenomenal. The best ever. Phenomenal. <laughs> right, he... so we had him and his partner on this show about the same book, Unstressable. Mm. And I said about Which that book... Which is a book, great book. I said it's the most useful book we've ever had on. We've had thousands yeah. of books on, Abby, as you know, right? But we, I said it's the most useful book I've ever read. <laughs> Thank you so much. There you go. Oh, what a whinger. <laughs> Um, t- tell us about your experience of Mo and, oh, and what I you just... learned from. Oh, but first, first, first of all, explain what he does. So Please. Mo Gowder, he was, you know, he was like the CEO of Google X, or he ran yeah. Google yeah, X. He He's like a mega mind, yeah. super, super powerful entrepreneur, and he tragically lost his son yeah. in a routine operation, and he completely changed his life around yeah. and his mindset. And you know, most people, if they lose a child, you'd never get over that. And he is just remarkable, kind full of wisdom yeah and just listening listening to him talk was just so therapeutic and he's so clever yeah he's like he's a happiness guru in a way isn't happiness he? guru what did, what did you learn from him i just you know just living in the moment you know stop like planning for what you're gonna do and just enjoy every day yeah yeah and that's just, you touched upon something early didn't you about it's okay to it's okay to wake up every morning and to say you're grateful, but oh yeah. So I was listening to Kelly Hoppen. Oh yeah, and I really She's enjoyed fabulous that. Fabulous Kelly. She, Kelly is also on Abby's mm. podcast. You were you were mainly using her for advice because you were doing up a house at the time. Yeah, but she in also amongst, helps, doesn't it? In, <laughs> <laughs> Kelly Hoppen, come on. <laughs> in amongst all of that. She said she'd recently had cancer and that she used to say, I'm very grateful for my health, but she didn't feel it. And then after her cancer, she she felt she woke up every morning and she actually felt really grateful for her health because it takes yeah. something like that to, to change your, you know, because you give oh, I'm really grateful for my health, but I've never really... Take I'm, it for granted yeah, you do. most of your life until something, something happens. You know, I am definitely more in that space of... Being great, I think lockdown did that to me. Then, yeah, you know, being at home with the kids I and know. so many people going through a horrific time in lockdown. But I was like, this is so special that we can kind of stop and be together as a family. And I, I, I'm so grateful to have happy, healthy family. Yeah, we're so lucky, aren't we? We are so, so lucky. lucky. We're so lucky. We got we got four kids. I got five. Tash and I have four, and they're all really healthy. Mm. And sometimes you feel a bit of shame and a bit of guilt about that because oh, I know. You've got four and they're all really, really well. It's I know. like gosh. My li- my little one's been in PGL all week. It's the first time she's been away and she's home today. <laughs> I've cried all week because she can't have any contact yeah, yeah. with them. Yeah, yeah. It's so You're bizarre. Going again. She's going again. I know. <laughs> what is wrong? I'm not pregnant before anyone says it. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've taken the box of tissues. Oh, no, okay. what the hell? Have the, I'll have them back in a sec. We'll tag team the uh, box of tissues. Okay. Um, yeah, but uh, did you ask, was it down to Kelly Hoppen? Was your new hall carpet advice down, was it from Kelly Hoppen where, yeah, by all means get a new hall carpet, but still you must only allow people in the back door? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I still... I- I am very OCD in my house. Right. And everyone just walks on my cream rug and it drives me mad. Dogs, right. kids. Um, but Kelly Hoppen is going to come round and help me. She said she was still planning a date. She did to... me once. Did she? She did my living room, yeah. How was it? 
the living room was great and then I got the bill I thought we'll just leave we'll, we'll leave it at the living room <laughs> <laughs> I know yeah but you get what you pay for <laughs> yeah you absolutely do get what you pay for <laughs> no it's great um, other guests on the show um, the lady I think she's your friend isn't she um, Freya Aspinall yeah Freya she, Aspinall. So, is, she, is she a pal of yours from back in the day or no she she's obviously from the Aspinall family yeah. in Port Lymph and her grandfather like had pet bear and a tiger she's and a model though isn't she as she's well. a model I thought you might know, know no no world. she's she's like 20 years younger than me oh I didn't she's know a baby that. sorry I didn't know that um because you talk as if you've known each other forever. Yeah, she, she's just a, lo- a lovely girl, and obviously she's been bo- born into this family where they've kept these, obviously, wild animals, and she is on a mission to rehome them. Another, uh, uh, rewild them, sorry. Yeah, rehome. another fascinating check. So in the most recent episode, released on Monday, 17th of June, Growing Up With Grillers, The Dark Side of Zoos with Freya Aspinall with Abby on Abby's podcast, Exhibit A. The podcast delves into Freya's unique upbringing surrounded by exotic animals and her daily routine at the animal sanctuary. I mean, some of the revelations in that oh are just, God. you know... She, like, hand-reared two lion cubs. Like, they were sleeping in her bed. Like, she regards these animals as her family members. You know, their lives are dedicated to looking after these animals and they're the only, you know, um, what's the word? They're the only, (laughs) I can't think of the word, (laughs) that uh, rewild the animals, the only um, thing. And she says, doesn't she, quite early on in the conversation, she says, a lot of the things we think are wrong with zoos aren't Mm. and some of the things we think aren't wrong with zoos are, Mm. basically is what she's saying there. Yeah, because a lot of zoos... The animals that they home are not endangered species, so there's no, really no reason for them to be there, like in her opinion. And she's on a mission, and she's such a young girl, so switched on. And you know, I think she like they raised like over a million pound the other night. Yeah, for the it's foundation. definitely not. It, it's not the easiest path for her to have have, have gone on, is it? Really, mm. she could have just sort of so you know, yeah, I'll, and just stepped away from it. But she's actually yeah. anti lots of what. Yeah, she's totally anti zoos. She yeah. com- completely anti zoos and. You know, she is on a mission to rewild all these animals yeah. that should be in the wild. It's another great conversation. These are all great conversations. Who else do you have in your sights coming up? Oh, I've got incredible. I've got chefs. I've got Hollywood actors. Are these all in the can. Yeah, I've done a few. Some doctors, gyne doctor. And how, how many are you aiming for? One a week or one a week s- series? It's one a week, one 50 a week. Two a year. Yeah. You're just going to keep it going the whole keep time. Keep going. Wow. Yeah. Um, Abby Clancy, lovely stuff coming in. Catherine says, I bloom in love. Abby C, she cheers me up <laughs> and she's hilarious. I'm so, so excited to hear the new pod. And I think one of the reasons you get under people's skin in the right way is because you are so light hearted. And so they've, it's a, you're a very easy person to talk to and to, to be with, Thanks. which has got to be helpful. I think, I think, um, People do let the guard down around me. I think I'm. I'm. I think they know I'm a trustworthy person. And yeah. I feel like I'm a good person. I would yeah. say I am. And yeah, it, I'm grateful that people do open up to me. It's crazy. You're yeah. really it's into great it. For, great for the pod. You're really, you're really into it. Aren't <laughs> no, you? I, I love, love it. I've I learned love it so, so much. Because I, you know, there they say, you know, tell me who hasn't got a podcast because everybody's got a podcast. I know. And there's a there's a lot of people who are really good at this job broadcasting. You've got podcasts, and the podcasts are all right. But like anything nowadays, whether it's Netflix or or whether it's music, they've got you've got to be amazing to cut through or to sustain. And you, honestly. Yours is right up there. Val, uh, I wouldn't say otherwise, you know that. From a fellow scouser by birth, she fills me with pride, Abby Clancy. She's (laughs) typically quintessentially self-effacing, authentic, unapologetic, so funny and whip smart. That's the thing. That's the killer combo. It's great, isn't it? That's lovely. Um, you often do this quick fire round, and what you do with your quick fire round is you do it at the beginning. Lots of people do it at the end. You do it at the beginning. I do it at the beginning to kind of loosen them up. Yeah, it works as well. Yeah, it's good. It's good. See, that is the beginner's mind. Mm. That's something that people who've been doing this for ages wouldn't do. It's always a bit of fun at the end if you've got time. Okay. But you've you've spun that around on its head. Yeah. I can't take the credit for that, unfortunately. That was my brother's idea. It was a great idea. <laughs> well done, bro. It's, good. it's a good exercise. Um, let's have some of your quick fire questions back at you. Okay. These are the questions you often ask. You do change it up a bit, don't you, sometimes? Mm. But, I mean, some of the regular questions are, are you an early bird or a night owl? I'm an early bird. Of course you are. Early bird. <laughs> I want to be in bed by... We go to bed so early. We put the kids to bed. I'll have a cup of tea, my bickies, if I'm not having a glass of wine. And then I'm in, we're in bed. Do you ever take your, your... Do you have a saucer of bickies, a plate of bickies? Yeah, or? he brings them up to me every night. Right, so you have the bickies and tea in bed? In bed. Oh, my gosh. What's not to like about that? How I'm do you such find a granny. The, the, the glucose, is there not a glucose spike with the tea and with the bickies that keeps you awake? 
No, because I'm exhausted by the time I get into bed. Yeah, well, so I, am I, you know, I. I'm going to do that Zoe thing. Yeah. Um, to Continuous test. glucose monitor. Yeah. CGM. Because my my my, bro- my my other brother who lives in Dubai is like a health fanatic. Right. And he won't like drink or eat certain things yeah. because of all this blood sugar and yeah. caffeine, whatever. So that's something I'm learning about. I've got a few people on my podcast who are going to give me more info on all of that because I don't really know. On the pod. All right. Uh, City lights or starry nights? Mm. It's your question. You ask this a lot to people. Starry nights. What I love about the fact is you haven't thought of your own answer. That's so cool. I know. I'm going to go starry nights. I'm going to I'm going to go um cuz a lot of people are reluctant to say one or the other, aren't they? Cuz yeah. they they're cut they're, cu- they're, uh, they're sort of um sort of uh, drawn up by the two, but I would have gone city lights up until about 2003. <laughs> and now I'm all about the starry nights. Yeah. yeah. Some of the city lights ended up as starry nights, mm. but they weren't meant to. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, what does happiness mean to you? Happiness to me is everyone else being happy, my family being happy and healthy. Like, it just, I know it sounds cheesy, but that's, that makes, that's when I am most happiest. That's great. That's a great <laughs> answer. The last thing you learned that fascinated you, Abby Clancy? Oh, my God. Do you know what? I was actually earwigging in someone's conversation yesterday when I had lunch and they were talking about the reason why carrots were orange and now well, I, I don't know why, but I can't remember now. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? Well, they used to be white. So do you know? No, I, I've forgotten the middle bit like you. I've forgotten <laughs> the important bit. All carrots were white and then they went orange and I can't remember why, but... Carrots were definitely white. Uh, yeah, I was I was and listening something... to this guy next to me. Yeah, and he he was actually saying loads of interesting stuff. But I was with my girlfriends who weren't talking about interesting stuff. We were, you know, <laughs> slagging our husbands <laughs> off and talking about hair and makeup. You know, the usual. <laughs> oh, my but daughter's yeah. listening to this now, and she absolutely loves you. You'll see it. You'll see it tomorrow. Yeah, it'll be great. Um, yeah. So there's the other thing about carrots. Somebody did a challenge where they ate. They eat carrots for like a month. They and you turn, go brown. They, they turn you orange. Yeah, they, yeah. Well, they turn you orange. Yeah. Um, I need to do that because I am, um, white Irish freckly. You, was that a fake tan you got? This on is there, a fake tan. Yeah. Okay, I need some of that. Dove. Yeah. Okay. Dove. Get it on. All right. Oh, you, by the way, you're doing very well with the old adverts on the podcast as well. Uh, am I? Yeah. Are you going to do any of those spoken ads? Because they're, you know, they're they're the real deal. Yeah. We yeah. do them on Therapy Crouch. Yeah. You're going to do any on yours? Yeah. 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 You got anybody in your sites for that? Dove. Dove. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Dove. 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 Go on. Carrots. I, I, I looked it up and yeah. it seems like it's either in the 16th century, the Dutch, is it this? They had a white carrot and they had a yellow carrot and they cross pollinated <laughs> them to as a sort of well done to the Dutch royal family. No, but well, I didn't think that was that interesting. But that wouldn't work either because know. if you if you add white to yellow, it go it lemon. Was, it's not, not going to go orange. It's going to go lighter. You need yeah. to add something darker, don't you? Yeah. But well, that's what it says. All I right. don't know. Maybe I've the got orange. it wrong. But I remember at the time yeah, going, "Oh my god, I didn't know that." Okay, your question that you asked to lots of people. Back to you. Your three dream dinner guests. Um. Peter, and Bono. And. Bono. That's two. And you. And me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for including me there. A uh, little life at the at the at the day. Uh, your favourite book? My favourite book is at the moment is Unstressable. I'm still going yeah, through no, it. I'm with you. I'm Honestly. with you. I've got to read. I've got to reread it. Yeah, there's so many books I want to reread, but I have to read so many for the show anyway. I love reading. Sue Barker came in this week. She's done this story of Wimbledon, of you know her time at Wimbledon, all her favourite players, her favourite players' favourite players, which we never got to talk mm. to her about because um, we didn't have time. That's a great book. Also, you've just re- returned from a little uh, sneaky break, you and Pete, yeah. on Taormina in Sicily. Now, I've been to Taormina it's and you, sta- you stayed at the White Lotus Hotel. Yeah, it's so <laughs> funny because... Um, Pete said that they thought that I was Jennifer Coolish when I, when I arrived. Like <laughs> Jennifer, hi, welcome back. <laughs> but it was it was great. We it was just a total chill, sightseeing, walking around. You know, so much culture there and incredible buildings. Did you rewatch White Lotus before you went? No, we should have. I would we it, should have. I would have watched it while I was there. Pete wanted to watch the Godfather. We, Pete wanted to do the Godfather tour. Right. Because I've never seen the Godfather. There were there are three. Well, or any of them. I've never seen them. I've never seen them. Um, oh my gosh! It's probably a bit too like violent. For, violent. And was it hard to get in at the hotel? 
No. Because apparently it was booked up for like months and months after. Maybe that's... Oh, that, really? That affects us. Because oh, it's no. a while ago now, wasn't it? White Lotus. White Lotus 2. They're making the third one. Boom. I've stayed in both White Lotus hotels. Have you? Yeah, the other one was in Hawaii. We stayed there as well. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So you might know where the third one is then, you, without knowing that you know. Maybe. Um, all right, so you were also listen to an audio book with Pete on holiday. We forgot to buy a book. <laughs> I don't get to read often because right. of obviously the kids so busy at home and I yeah. love to read. And we forgot to buy a book. So we downloaded Martina Cole's latest book, which right. was nine hours long. And right. we did the whole nine hours in three days. So one AirPod each? One AirPod. We shared an <laughs> AirPod. Whilst, whilst sipping, sipping yeah. one at the pool? Yeah, no, we were at, we had a Baileys uh, at the uh, pool. Oh no, you told me about this. You went mad on mm, Baileys, didn't you? We went crazy on Baileys. Because we, when we saw each other in Portugal, mm. you just started your Baileys thing then. Baileys thing, yeah. Is that was it carrying on from there? It must have been. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why we. It's like because it's like a Christmas drink, isn't it? Really, it's such a granny but with drink. ice. I know. <laughs> maybe I am a granny now. Wow. Um, how do you define success, Abby Clancy? I defined success. <sighs> By having no regrets and being happy. Yeah. Like, that's the ultimate success, isn't it? Being happy no matter, you know, you don't have to be a gazillionaire or yeah. a CEO to be happy. I would also say being at peace. You know, so when, yes. you, when your head hits the pillow, are you at peace? Well, that's like no regrets, isn't yeah, it, really? Yeah, it's the same. Mo Gowda said, didn't he, on, on your podcast, he said, um, he said, you don't have to reflect on your life at the end of it. You can just reflect on your life at the end of every day. Yeah. Because every day is like a mini life anyway. And you, we change as a person from day to day. I thought that was brilliant. Yeah. When I heard that, I thought, right, I'm having that one. Everything, everything he says is brilliant. Yeah, you're right. And he's on with his partners. He was on the show. Alice Law. Yeah, Alice yeah. Law. Co-writer of the book. Yeah, Both she's great. great. Um, we're out of time. That was oh, half no. an hour. Uh, it's a brilliant podcast. Abby Clancy, Exhibit A with Abby Clancy. Abby's going to come and join us at Gig in the Garden tomorrow with Pete. Um, what did he say about the match? Did he say anything about the, ma about the match? Any any sort of tips for Gareth Southgate if he's listening? Did Pete say anything about that at all? Uh, no. Uh, uh, maybe score more goals. Score more goals. <laughs> any any idea how we can do that? Um, I don't know. Well, we've got a great team. Pete seems to think we've got an amazing team. No, we definitely have got an amazing team. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we've got some of the best footballers in the no, world. No, I know. Like, um, what's his name? Jude and... Yeah. Oh, the other one I love. Oh, my God, my mind. Foden. Foden. Yeah, we've got a great team. Yeah. Great team. Great team. Yeah, last night it was like the Beatles getting on stage and not being able to single play a note, wasn't it? Was it that bad? Apparently. No, I, <laughs> I'm not saying it was. Abby, I liked it. <laughs> Okay. Pass sideways, yeah. pass backwards, backwards, lose possession. No, and, put nobody up front. And don't, for goodness <laughs> sake, break into a jog. Walk, walk, walk. Were they walking? Uh, you have no idea. Do you remember that game of football you saw us play? Yes. Before you got slower than that. Oh. <laughs> it was. Oh it was gosh. literally slower than that. Maybe they, maybe, you know they watch videos of other games. Maybe mm -hmm. that one, maybe yeah. they should. should have... <laughs> oh, what a laugh. What are you doing today? What are you doing for the rest of the day? Um, I'm going to, I've got a couple of meetings and then I'm going home. What because... does that mean? What are your meetings about? Well, I'm going for a facial, but I just didn't want to say that. <laughs> 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 I'm going for a facial. What is a meeting of sorts? Isn't yeah, it? it's yeah. Um, and then my daughter's home. Right. So we need to go and get some welcome home balloons, right. and I, I can't wait to see her. Like the house has been bizarre, yeah, like yeah. without her. All right. So can't wait to get her home, and you know. And then tomorrow you're pitching up at us. We're going to we're going to yours yeah. on Saturday, and yeah. then we've got Taylor Swift on Sunday. Oh, good. All right. Pete's um, not coming to that. He doesn't want to come, but you know. We'll... Yeah, because Pete would never have restricted view, would he? No. But imagine if you're behind him. Yeah. Mm. The only the only worst thing would be if is if Pete had big hair as well. <laughs> yeah. We we were behind Richard Osman at Fulham for one season. It was awful. Uh. <laughs> have we scored have we? <laughs> yeah. Abby, anything else you'd like to say to, to our audience? I've said I've I've just been calling out your podcast all the time. I show know, thank you so I much. I really want people to listen to it. Exit A with Abby Clay. Anything yeah. else you'd like to say? No, every Monday, check it out. It's um it's good on your lens, I think. That's what I'd say. All right. Cheers, Abby. Virgin, Virgin.